How does movie making actually relate to writing, your composition skills? What should the written language do for the reader? It should tell a story. What should it do for their imagery? It should make the movie in their head. But if the, the story is written in such a way that it goes beginning and then middle and then end and then beginning again, then middle again, then end and then beginning, and oh, and this other piece I forgot to tell you about, your movie's like all over the place. You have no idea what they're trying to say. Or they say, hey, it went down the road by the dog next to the thing under that other stuff. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Good answer. So it could be because they use such vague terminology. Like, say, for example, if I say to you, the dog went down the road. Okay? Sir, what do you picture for that? The dog went down the road. What would you see? The dog going down the road. Okay. You think your dog looks like mine? I'm probably picturing my dog as opposed to yours. Okay. How, I see your dog. how come? Didn't I tell you the dog went down the road? Shouldn't we have the same picture? Oh, the dog, perhaps, but not a specific dog. Yeah. So, what if I said the small white poodle? but down the brown dirt road next to the green grassy field at sunset. What has that done to your movie now? More explicit. Yeah, my words should be dictating what you visualize. If I want to clearly communicate with you, I'm using more accurate nouns, adjectives, adverbs. I'm putting more detail to build the movie for you. How does it relate to my writing? When I write it, I should actually be writing with more detail as well. If you have a very clear movie in your head, it's much easier to take that movie and convert it into writing. So part of a program like this is designed to do that. You first have to do it at what level? Written language or spoken language? Yeah, this is the same scenario. Even when we're talking about comprehension, you've got to deal with oral language first, be able to talk it in a systematic, clear, concise, very detailed fashion before actually you go to writing it. Because what does writing have that spoken language doesn't have? What demands to put on your brain that spoken language has none of those demands at all? Grammar? What else? Structure. Yeah, there's special sitting structures. What else? Yeah, sequencing. How about spelling? Yeah. How about punctuation? You know, how about capitalization? How about comma usage? You know, all those these are there's all these extra rules of written language that have no bearing whatsoever on spoken language. I hate to tell you, but you speak in agrammatic sentences. You speak in incomplete you know, sentences. That's horrible, isn't it? But that is our acceptable spoken language. It doesn't have to be a complete sentence. It doesn't always have to have a subject and a noun. Or a verb, sorry, subject and a verb. <laughs> but when you, sir? Yes. When you uh, read something, yes. aren't you essentially converting it back to a spoken word? Essentially you are, but it should be converting it back to spoken into a movie. Unless it's something you already know about. Like say, for example, say that you're an um, architect. And I want to describe you about Frank Lloyd Wright buildings. But you've studied Frank Lloyd Wright buildings all for too many days. So if I talk about it, you don't really need to visualize it because you know that information so well, it's part of your linguistic knowledge base. So there's a big theory that's been worked on for about, gosh, probably about six decades now. This one researcher has worked on this theory called the dual coding theory. And what it says is, when you're comprehending, you're using one of two systems. It's the imaging system, which is that imagery, or it's that logogen system, which is language. And I'm physically doing right side versus left side because predominantly in imaging studies, when you're making movies, the right side's doing more of the activity. Predominantly when you're doing language, what's happening then? It's the left side of the brain doing most of the work. So you're supposed to be using those two systems interchangeably if they both are strong and work well. If they're not strong and they don't work well, you're relegated to just using one or the other because you don't know how to use both. 